Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Right, right. Oh, that's interesting. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. It's, it's good you were out in the field doing, you know, the, the kind of, not grudge work, but, you know, being in family, with family. Oh, things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Perfect. Good for you. No weekends. What are you going to do with yourself? <laughs> yeah, which is great. Oh, good, good, good. Hello. All this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a simple tune, though. You'll get it real quick. Yes, yes. <laughs> did you have your lesson? Oh. We did a quartet lesson. She um, helped me with this one. I, I came with one specific thing. The redhead. So we start out. Um, yeah, whenever I go to it. Like, sounds like that. So she identified the fact that I was using a lower voice to get you know, red hair to lower. And I was using a lower voice to get high notes. It's Only getting better with the problem. Was. Um, you know, I've got to practice with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's a little concerned. She thinks I have a little tremor, which um, I don't know. I, I have heard it, but I always thought it was maybe just a temperature and the fact that I teach how to open my throat. She said I'm actually deaf mother in the throat. I hope she figured this out, but um, she said it's kind of a catch. But I'm saying that I should take a drink of water instead of like coughing because the coughing can end up clearing my throat and causing more problems. Yeah, but I do. I try. In fact, I've always wondered if my rising voice would ever know this because I always not so much coughing but singing. Yeah, but I can. She goes, you know, it's because I. I said I don't think it's a tick, you know, because it does sound like that. But she goes, no, no, you've got it in there. It's just that you. Um, It's funny, I, I was there on um, Thursday, and I was the last one before her lunch time. The guy um, called me and said, you know, can you, could you stay and have lunch with me, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I was thinking to myself, gee, I think I would want to be on my own. Like, I have to talk all day long, you know. So she did, in fact, say, she goes, you know what, I'm, I'm good, you know. And uh, so I, I, texted, I texted the guy, and I said, you know, she's, she's okay. And I said, and I said Personally, <laughs> you know? yes, yeah. yeah. I, I could totally get that. You know, go and relax a little bit, you know, rather than have to try. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So she was appreciative of that. So anyway, yeah. So oh my God! Yes. Yeah, that was. That was. I know. Is a little more comfortable. It's funny because Kathy was the music teacher. Oh, yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Right. Right. She is really. Sure. Yeah. I know. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The person with the sweaty, she had her hair up. 
she does. She does. You know. Yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. I would doubt it. I would doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you all in purple. Oh, yeah. Are you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I can tell you about it. Yeah. yeah. What song are you doing with the little one? Oh. Is there anybody here from the Pittman family? The Pittman family? Yeah, yeah, it's just so, and it's so nice to have the whole house like just all kind of cleaned up. 
Let me tell you, kid. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. I'm a reading teacher, so I, I think I know what people That is so funny. I'm the mouth of babe. I know, like, really? It doesn't confuse <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Our entrance hymn is number 746 in your books. All that is hidden, number 746 in your books. As we proclaim those things that are hidden, such as the hymn, <laughs> let, us be, let us be able to pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. What is not hidden is the mercy, the love, and forgiveness that comes from Jesus Christ. And that is why we do not hesitate at the beginning of our Mass this morning to take time to then reveal to God our sins, to confess those sins, so that then He can reveal and not hide mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. So now as we do experience that forgiveness, let us confess. We come to you as sinners with a contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. 
O God, you who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, so that with spiritual sight made pure, then we may rejoice to behold your glory in our lives. As we pray in the name of Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told them, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on that boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know how you are devoted to God since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked out, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars in the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? 
Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We notice, of course, how often in the scriptures, the mountain experience is proclaimed for us, special encounters with God. We think about Moses and Mount Sinai. We think of Mount Hora, which we heard about with the story about uh, Abraham today. We talk about the fact that a mountain experience like the gospel, the transfiguration of Jesus, always something spectacular, something meaningful, something to be remembered. We even more recently in our own history think of Dr. Martin Luther King saying, I have been to the mountain and all that he experienced and all that he proclaimed and lived for us to live more equally as brothers and sisters, no matter race, no matter religion, no matter what our ethnicity. The mountain experience. Think about some of your mountain experiences. I think of mine as ordination you know, and I'm sure that our deacon remembers that as a mountain experience for him. But also, when you got married, okay, uh, the mountain experience, oh, there you are, Mary. <laughs> you know, so a marriage, a mountain kind of experience. A firstborn child. Maybe getting that ideal job you've always wanted. Or maybe for the students who are here, hopefully it's because you got this college of your choice that you really wanted to be able to be here at the University of Buffalo. All these great mountain experiences. But you know what? We have little mountains too. Because all I can think of is that reading from the gospel in which Peter said, Lord, you know what? It's good for us to be here. That's the mountain experience. It's good for us to be here. How about the time that you who have children or grandchildren experience the first steps of that son, of that granddaughter? How about the time in which you just spend over coffee at Tim Hortons with a friend? How about the opportunities that you have just to be able to share an anniversary with somebody or a birthday celebration? Little things, but it's, hey, Lord, you know, it's good that we can be here and experience it. But then there are those other times 
that are not so good, Lord, for us to be experiencing this. It's not so good, Lord, when I'm sick and I'm going through chemotherapy. Not so good, Lord, when I get fired and don't have a job. Not so good, Lord, when I'm failing in my classes. Not so good, Lord, when I'm in the process of a divorce. Lord, it's not so good. But that's life. That's what you and I, what all of us go through in life. We have those mountain experiences and then just the opposite. And just think about what Abraham went through. When God said, I know that your son Isaac, first of all, is your only son, and you love him so dearly, and I want you to sacrifice him. Why the heck would God ask that a parent do that to an only child, and that child who was promised to be the uh, conduit for generations to come, more numerous than the sands on the sea and the stars in the sky. How could it happen if, if all of a sudden I kill my son? Well, the reason that that story was so important was because the Israelites lived amidst the Canaanites. And the Canaanites did say and feel and had services to kill a child, especially a firstborn, to appease the gods that were angry with them to try to get the God's favor in their lives again. And they thought the only way they could do it was to sacrifice that child. And so what the Israelites were trying to say is, no, but we have a God who maybe you think would ask us to do that, but would never do it. We trust our God. We trust that we don't have to offer up a human sacrifice. Do we trust God? Do we? Do we trust God when we're not in those mountain experiences but in the other ones, the devastating ones, the painful ones, those filled with sorrow and heartache, can we still trust God? That's what we're supposed to learn from the scriptures today. And even in the gospel, the gospel says that when this happened, they were frightened. And then when they came down the mountain, they didn't understand what Jesus meant when he said, after the, I'm raised from the dead. Who's raised from the dead? How can that possibly happen? They questioned. They weren't sure. And so we too question. We question sometimes what's going on in our lives and in our relationship with God. God, where are you? Are you taking a nap? Are you busy with somebody else? Come on, Lord. Get on board. I need you. And so we question. We doubt. We're afraid. But my brothers and sisters, we are here today to remember we are a God that we can trust, a God who is with us in everything, no matter what we are going through, rejoicing with us when we're happy and literally saddened with us when we go through those terrible, sorrowful, sad, heartbreaking experiences. That's our God. Hopefully we're not fair-weather friends to a God you say, well, God, I'll believe in you when things are going well. Hey, when things are going great, I have money in the bank, good health, whatever. Oh, I believe in you, God. You're a tremendous God. Huh. But when things aren't going so well, eh, who needs a God? You know, God doesn't care. Are we fair-weather believers? Or do we have such a deep faith that no matter what is happening, we know that God is in the midst of it all. God is there to transfigure or transform the situation just so that they could really see who Christ was on that mountain. No matter what our experience may be, we can say, ah, Lord, reveal yourself now in this situation. Let me be aware of and see that your presence is truly there in my heart, in my mind, in my life. You are an awesome God a wonder-filled God, a God that we can truly trust and believe in and know that you are always with us. Amen. And let us pray. Lord, 
We pray for people at this point in their lives whose faith is truly being challenged, challenged by the scandals within the church, people who are affected by the political problems that we are going through, all the hatred, the bitterness, the lies, the accusations, the condemnations, a world that is still filled with racial prejudice and one religion torturing and killing people of other religions. Lord, we need you. We need to be aware that you are aware and that you are there to answer our prayers to make it the world that you created it to be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are a people at home or here because we pray for one another. And we know that others are praying for us. But Lord, there are so many people who have no one to pray for them. They may be homeless. They may be in a hospital, in a nursing home, totally isolated, no visits, no relatives or friends. So Lord, may our prayers go out to them. They may not be aware of our prayer for them, but you are. And so, Lord, use us as your instrument of comfort and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And if anybody else has a special prayer, please let us know loudly enough that we can make it our prayer as well. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Special intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Alyssa and Riley, two children being baptized today uh, at 1145 and 1245, that the great bright light of baptism will shine forever in their lives. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we were reminded by Paul in his letter to the Romans, what do we have to fear? Because God, you are always there with us. No matter who's against us, you are always for us and with us. You who live and reign forever and ever, amen. Please join in singing, I have loved you, number 588, in your books, number 588. Everlasting love, I have called you, and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you, and you are mine. And you are mine, I have loved you with an everlasting love, I have called you and you are mine. loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. And now let us pray and ask what we do give to the Lord in bread and wine and in our lives. Everything we give will be found acceptable. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. Sacrifice your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify us, your faithful, both in body and mind, for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, under all circumstances, to give you praise and thanks, most gracious God, especially in Christ Jesus. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And that is why we join together now with one another, with the angels and saints, and we sing these words of praise. and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you have made everything holy that you have created, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, today, once again, we humbly implore you by that same Holy Spirit, now make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night that he was betrayed by a friend, nonetheless, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then in a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, Lord, as we do celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, as well as his ascension to your right hand, and looking forward to his second coming, we offer you today in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon this oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death has reconciled all of us to yourself and grant that we who are to be nourished by the very body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And 
May he make of all of us here today and at home an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with all of the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with her spouse, Joseph, with the apostles, with the martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we do rely for unfailing help. And so may this reconciliation, we pray, advance peace and salvation throughout the whole world. Continue to use Francis, our Pope, our local Bishop Mike, the women and the men who are leaders of all religions, churches, and denominations. May they always be your instruments of justice, peace, love, and harmony for a world you have created for everyone, not just for people like us. And so, Lord, having listened graciously to the prayers of this part of your family this morning, we know that you continue out of compassion and mercy take care of your children, especially scattered throughout the world, in particular, especially immigrants and refugees, as well as asylum seekers. Now, Lord, in a special way, we ask that you would remember our relatives and our friends, all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. May you give them kind admittance into your eternal kingdom, especially Father Pat's brother, Alan. We ask, Lord, that we also at some point would be able to enjoy that fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And now we have again a, ch a chance, an opportunity to show that we do trust our Heavenly Father as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sin primarily, but much more importantly, upon our faith. So we could share peace and unity here with one another this morning, with others the rest of this day, and then one day with you in heaven forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord's peace and his joy be with all of you. Let us offer each other sign and prayer for peace. Peace. God bless. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all of us. Now call to join in the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the altar for communion, please join in singing hymn number 651, Open My Eyes, number 651 in your books. There is a reflection for the second week of Lent by the entrances and in the newsletter. We continue to meet every Friday at 7 p.m. in the chapel to reflect on the Stations of the Cross. Save the date. Uh, we'll have a Lenten retreat on March 20th from 5 until 9 p.m. The Homeless Ministry meets Monday. Our next children's mass is this coming Sunday at 1045. 
Our homeless ministry, UB Student Pantry, and Easter Egg Hunt are all in need of donations. See the newsletter for details. On March 4th, there'll be a training session for those interested in becoming Eucharistic ministers. The session will start at 6.30 p.m. And for any of our students, on Tuesday, Mike Beto, entrepreneur, and Wednesday night dinner MC will speak on the importance of character for career success. We will have dinner at six and the talk at seven. Please RSVP using the QR code on the flyer. We're having pasta and meatballs with breadsticks for dinner. All right. This Thursday, we'll reflect on St. John Henry Newman's writings at 7 p.m. and do a karaoke at eight. Father Roy will be doing that. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I just have a, something to mention. I have Thanks, placed uh, a few more of the uh, newsletters and the brochures about the Buffalo House of Hope for the refugees and asylum seekers at both entrances. And just a reminder that when you do, uh, for those, again, I'm very grateful for your donations, but if you do write out a check, put down Buffalo house of hope only because there are other houses of hope <laughs> so buffalo house of hope okay we can still deposit it but just something to keep in mind but again thank you everyone for your support and your encouragement and the 14 people that are currently being helped from four different countries now let us stand in prayer As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still here on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. 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 May the Lord be with all of you. With your spirit. Now let us bow our heads and ask for this special Lenten blessing, giving our personal amen at its conclusion. Lord. Bless all of us, your faithful, with a blessing that endures forever. Keep us faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son. Yes, may we always listen to him as you ask us to in the gospel, so we may always desire and then at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. In his name we pray, amen. amen. May Almighty God continue to bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Amen. be to God. Please join in singing hymn number 778, anthem number 778. Chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to the world while we are for Him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are question, we are free. We are called, we are chosen, we are Christ for one another. We are promised to the while we are for him today. We are sign, we are wonder, we are sower, we are seed. We are harvest, we are hunger, we are questioned, we are free. Oh. <laughs>